one more time, Sister Sheila. How great is our God this morning, greatly to be praised, hallelujah. You may be seated today, amen. Glory to God, we are so thankful that you are here today. We have a lot out, some's got COVID, some's got, uh, are staying home just because they got exposed to COVID, and some's not for sure if they've got COVID, but uh, amen. I guess we got all three bases there covered this morning. But uh, I'm thankful that you don't. You're here worshiping the Lord with us this morning. But uh, so thankful for you being here. Don't forget, coming up, we have several announcements uh, uh, coming up uh, this morning. Don't forget, Senior Saints will be having uh, game, we, we won't really call it game night, maybe game afternoon. Uh, it'll be from uh, 3.30 to 5.30 on the 19th. So not this Saturday. But next Saturday, Senior Saints, and uh, there'll be food and fellowship and uh, playing some games and just whatever. And so uh, uh, see Sister Barton if you need to know what to bring. And, uh, you know, if she asks you to bring something, she's new at this, all right? <laughs> she's not a, a seasoned pastor. And so uh, uh, pastors are used to being told, no, I can't. But uh, just be a hypocrite and do it, all right? Appreciate it. Amen. How many will do that yeah, for me? Amen. amen. So uh, uh, just uh, if she asks you to do something, just do it and uh, support her. And uh, Sister Cervantes is out today, but both of them are working together in that area. Then also on uh, February the 16th, not this Wednesday night, but next Wednesday night, uh, we'll be having a, a spaghetti supper <laughs> after church. So uh, don't forget about that. February the 16th, and of course it will be as it always is, $4 for children, uh, six or $7 for adults, and then uh, a family that has more than $20 worth, uh, it's just $20 per family as far as that goes. And then uh, all the proceeds will go to Impact. That's our Wednesday night children's program. It will go into their fund. They have spent all of their fund as far as to Christmas and uh uh, fall things that they had, Thanksgiving things, and then Christmas. And so uh, we need to help them out and uh, help them uh, get some of their funds back built up. So uh, that will be taking place. And then also, don't forget about our Wednesday night activities. Um, we have youth and Salt and Light. Uh, Wednesday night was our first time back uh, since the first year for Salt and Light youth. And uh, went real good. And they really did a great job out there. And then we have Jam, and that is five to 11-year-olds, and uh, Jesus and me, so that's Jam. And then we have our nursery, and then out here, of course, we have our Bible study out here. So that is on Wednesday night, so come out for that. Then start marking your calendar right now uh, for Revival. That will be coming up on the 20th of March. Mark your calendar for that, and we look uh, forward to that. Also, Sunday mornings, uh, prayer meeting at uh, 1015 over here in the prayer room. And uh, uh, come out and support the Sunday morning prayer meetings. Uh, I don't believe that any of us can ever get too much prayer. Then we'll also be having uh, Alicia Webb 
on Wednesday night, uh, the last Wednesday night of the month, the 27th, and so uh, she'll be speaking on that, or no, that's Sunday, excuse me, Sunday night. She was originally supposed to have been here a couple of Wednesday nights ago, but due to COVID, we had to reschedule with that. But she'll be here the last Sunday night of the month. Also, men, men, amen, all you men, the 26th, the 26th, uh, mark your calendars. We'll be having a work day, the 26th here at the church, or work morning. Uh, we got several things that we need to do, and uh, uh, Brother Brian and I did a lot of the hard work the other day and got a lot of the limbs, but we've got to get those limbs ground up and put up and, and uh, cleaned up and other things around here we got to get done. Uh, for spring and then uh, some other issues that we'll deal with on that day. So uh, uh, mark your calendars, men. We'll probably work from uh, 8.30 till maybe lunch or just however long it takes us and uh, uh, to get some things in shape around here for spring. So that'll be taking place. Also, uh, you can go to our new YouTube page. It is uh, Glad Tidings Church Corpus. Now, if you go in and you're trying to find just and you just put in Glad Tidings, there's a thousand YouTube pages for Glad Tidings. And so uh, uh, you got to go in there and put Glad Tidings Church Corpus. Amen. You say, well, how do I remember that? You just remember where you go to church and what town you live in. All right. Glad <laughs> Tidings Corpus. And so I uh, appreciate that uh, for that. Also, this morning is Mission Sunday. So uh, don't forget that. Uh, we'll be taking up our mission offering uh, here in just a minute after we take up our regular Sunday morning tithes and offering. And uh, we appreciate your faithfulness in giving to the Lord. Oh, and also, men, don't forget um, a week from tomorrow. Amen. Men, don't forget a week from tomorrow. If you can't figure that out, I'm not going to go any further, all right? Look on your calendar and figure that out for you because we don't want any divorces or anything like that uh, to take place and, uh, around here because you forgot what a week from tomorrow is, all right? You say, well, you know, I'm not much. Hey, go over at Dollar General and you can buy her a card for a dollar and act like you went to Hallmark and she'll never know the difference, amen? Just do something for your loved one uh, for that special day and uh, coming up. So that, and we just appreciate all that people do on those special days. Normally we have a uh, Valentine banquet, but this year because of some COVID and different other things, we just felt like we was, uh, we just don't want to risk some stuff. And so we uh, just, I enjoy coming to church and uh, I want us to be able to keep our doors open. So uh, uh, make sure that you do something there, men, amen, or women. And women, don't hurt for you by your husband a little something for that day either. And uh, <laughs> hallelujah, amen. How many of y'all like to get gifts? Amen. Oh, yeah, I do. Amen. I enjoy getting gifts, especially if I didn't have to help pay for it. Amen. <laughs> but uh, most of you know what I'm talking about there. <laughs> but uh, uh, don't forget about those things there. Mark, and get you a calendar. We've got a lot of things coming up. But this morning, we're going to receive our Sunday morning tithes and offerings. Then we'll come back here in a few minutes for our... Uh, mission offering like we do the first Sunday of every month. Can we stand this morning? And if you need to use the ATM machine, if you're listening on live stream, Sister Lisa has already put the number up. And uh, all you got to do is call in that number and uh, she'll, she'll get your tithing and your offerings ran through there. So if you'll do that this morning. Then uh, also this morning, uh, if you want to just go ahead and do your mission offering all at the same time. That's, that's fine, too. Uh, Brother David, would you pray and ask God to bless our offering this morning? Heavenly this is our Father. regular Sunday morning tithes and offerings. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for all that you've given us. Father, you thank you because you are our provider, Lord. We, ask, we thank you for giving us the strength to, to go out there and work for you, Lord. Now we ask that, to, that Lord, what we give you back, Lord, you will multiply it and use it for your glory. We ask this, you bless each and every individual in Jesus' name. Amen.
have several needs in our church. Let's be praying for Sister Marty. She needs God's healing and uh, having several different issues of COVID and pneumonia and gout and several other things. We pray for her this morning. Also remember Sister Becca. We ask God to touch her this morning as uh, they buried her mother Friday and they're on their way back from Arkansas today with those children. So be praying for her. Also this morning, uh, continually pray this morning for uh, Steve Branch. Remember him this morning. Pray and asking God to touch them this morning. Remember also this morning, uh, Sister Bonnie, continually pray for her. Brother Sister Placker this morning. Remember them. Remember Brother Richard's family this morning. They're all homesick. Uh, we're hoping they don't have COVID, but uh, we'll be praying for them, asking God to help them today, to minister to them, and to meet with them there at home. So we pray for our country this morning. Let's pray for our church this morning. We pray for those who are hurting in the world around us. Pray for our city, asking God to send revival to America. Man, so let's remember those needs this morning. Can we just take these right now in the name of Jesus? Father, Lord, we come this morning. God, we're believing for a mighty, mighty, mighty outpouring of the Holy Ghost. God, we need you to move in this hour. Lord, we need your anointing to pull down the strongholds of the enemy. Lord, we need in this hour for our churches to catch a flame. For the spirit of revival to begin to break the yoke of that enemy this morning, God. Lord, we pray for the sickness, God, that has encamped our world. God, we ask you just to move in the name of Jesus, to touch tonight, God. Touch in the service this morning, God. Every one of these needs, Father, are very special. Some of them are very urgent this morning. But you said that you're the healer of all manner of diseases this morning. God, we're believing that you're going to move and you're going to answer, and God, that you're going to heal this morning. Lord, that you're going to touch, Father, in the name of Jesus. Do the work right now, I ask God. Do the work right now, Father. Bring healing to this land. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Lord, we pray for every name that was mentioned this morning. Every name on our prayer list, God, that we may have failed to mention. Lord, each one of them needs you to minister in a special way. Lord, some of them are impossible cases with man. But Lord, we realize that your word said that all things are possible through Christ Jesus. And we're praying in that name this morning. Lord, we're praying in that name that has authority for healing and moving and reviving and restoring and saving and delivering name of Jesus. Father, we give you the praise. We give you the glory. In Jesus' name. Can we just lift our hands and worship him this morning?
Hallelujah. We're going to come this morning for our mission offering. And we're just so thankful that we're able to give every month to missionaries. And uh, actually, this last year, our missions was up a few thousand dollars in giving than what we give the year before. And people say, well, that, that's impossible. We Our crowds was down because of COVID and without a church. And, but, you know, God knows what he's doing. Amen. And he uses you to keep our missionaries on uh, uh, the field and uh, just doing their work this morning. So uh, uh, remember them. And uh, even in our youth class this last Wednesday night, they're starting to go over uh, different missionaries and tell what they are doing and uh, studying the life of missionaries and uh, uh, trying to get the children and uh, or the young people, should I say, encouraged about missions. And uh, they told me after class that the, the, the young people had a lot of questions about them. And But, uh, you know, missionary life isn't like our life here. Uh, some of them live in the bush. And when I say in the bush, and if you don't know what the bush is, just go between here and Laredo and then pull off on those <laughs> gravel roads and, and set out there by yourself and uh, uh, out in those, uh, I just call them rattlesnake land, go out there and and that's kind of what the bush is like. And uh, you don't see anybody for uh, a long time in the little villages, and they go from there. Others are in major cities and uh, around the world, and they're uh, ministering in those major cities and trying to reach them and bringing them to the gospel and the knowledge of, of God. Others, uh, like the Roma people, they're having a revival in their church and uh, uh, there, and they're just desiring to see God's moving, and the nation there has everything shut down, and they're calling their missionaries and their pastors saying, what can we do to have church? Man, wouldn't that be great here in America? Amen. Amen. And so, uh, uh, you know, other places like that. And then, then we have some missionaries, you know, right now, they're home for, on furlough, or they're home uh, trying to uh, uh, go back to their countries, and their countries haven't opened up yet, but uh, we need to pray for them and ask God uh, to help them in order that they can get back to where they are called. Uh, the low jacks that are back there on our wall, they just got back uh, two weeks ago to their mission uh, there in the South Pacific Islands, and so uh, they're real excited about being back on the field and others that we support, uh, and they're sending great reports of what God is doing. But how does that make this possible? It's made possible by our faithful giving so that they can stay on the field. You know, God doesn't ask any of us to just uh, fully support one. But if we can just do a little bit with everybody gathering together all across the United States, it keeps them on the field. And I appreciate your giving. I, I, I desire that you'll just continually do that and that we'll have another record-breaking year. Uh, uh, for our church here in our giving to missions. And uh, missions is the lifeline of the church. Amen. Amen. A church that doesn't give to missions is a church that doesn't have an outreach or a, view, a world view and doesn't see the need uh, to see souls saved. Uh, and so, you know, you say, well, you know, I, I, I can't go uh, to Africa. I can't go to Europe. I can't go to Australia. I can't go to Alaska or wherever it is that God has called our missionaries. You may not be able to go, but you can help others to go. And I'm not called to do missions. Uh, I'm called to do pastor and work and preaching here in America. But I also, though, I can help others so that they can stay on the field. So let's give this morning uh, into our missions and uh, and just ask God to bless uh, your mission offering this morning. Can we stand this morning? Hallelujah. As we get ready to give to missions, you can bring them forward. I know that a lot of you probably already wrote it down on your tithe envelopes or, or back there when you did your uh, uh, monies that you did with the ATM machine. That's fine. Uh, but we do always like to have a special time uh, in case somebody didn't get to do that already to bring your offerings forward or go back and use the machine. We appreciate that this morning. Father, Lord, we ask you this morning to bless our missionaries. Lord, I realize that some this morning are struggling in their place because of the same reasons the church here in America is. Lord, I pray that you will bless their efforts. God, that you'll give them souls for their efforts, God, that they'll make a difference in the world, that part of the world that you have called them. 
Lord, I pray that you'll protect all of our missionaries. Lord, not only from bodily harm, but God, from COVID, from other things that has come their way. Some of them are under spiritual warfare, dealing with tribal people, God. Lord, I pray that you'll just guard them and protect them. Some of them are struggling financially because churches and individuals didn't, haven't had the monies to give. God, I pray that you'll help churches like ours and others to pick up the load, Lord, and to carry the banner on. And ask those people, Lord, that right now may not be able to give as their finances increase, they'll get back to giving to missions. And Lord, we just count it a privilege this morning that we live in this wonderful country, a country of excess, that we're able to give a portion of our excess to your word, to see it go forth around the world. And Father, we give you the praise in Jesus' name. And we just lift our hands and thank God that we're able to give this morning. Just say thank you, Lord. Before you bring your offerings or before you go back to the ATM, Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your blessings that I'm able to give this morning. Hallelujah. You may bring your offerings forward or go to the ATM machine, whatever you need to do at this time. Thank you, worship team, today. Hallelujah. We are so thankful that you are here this morning uh, worshiping with us and uh, just glad that uh, everything is good in your life this morning and believing that God is going to uh, minister to each one of us this morning. Hallelujah. Well, like I said, it's so good to have you out this morning. It's good to have Lori with us, our sister Barton's daughter. Give her a big hand. Uh, this morning, good to have her with us, good to have the rest of you home and in church with us this morning. And how many enjoyed the cold weather this week? Wasn't it great? Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, 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 Sheila and I, we were out Friday afternoon and uh, drove over uh, to Rockport and uh, uh, we seen all those snowbird trailers and I thought, yeah, that's just what you get. You come down here thinking you get out of it. But uh uh, it was just wonderful and uh, enjoyed the cold weather. Just hated that we didn't get any snow, amen. And I was hoping we'd get it at least, at least knee, knee deep, amen. But uh, I would have just settled for a, co a covering. But uh, everywhere else did and uh, up around where my parents live, they got about 16 inches and they were just enjoying that. And my dad's 83 years old, but he's like a little kid when it snows. And you'd think somebody that's lived in it for 83 years, uh, they, they, it would just be normal. But 
he just it just overtakes him. He's in and out like a little kid checking and out playing in the snow, and he doesn't call it playing, you know. He's, all of a sudden, he's got to check the oil in his car. All of a sudden, he's got to do this and do that, but uh, uh, we, but he loves it, and uh, uh, I, we do too, but we didn't get any, and, and that's just the way life is, and uh, this time next week, it'll probably be close to 100 degrees, and, and we'll be thinking about the cold weather, hallelujah, but uh, we do, we appreciate you being out this morning. If you brought your Bibles, turn with us to the book of uh, Genesis, the book of Genesis, amen. Brother Natali, he moved down here where it was warm, so he's used to, uh, th- this is still warm weather to him, and uh, uh, coming from uh, the uh, New Jersey and New York City area, and uh, uh, they got hit this weekend up there, but uh, glory to God. All right, can we stand one more time for the reading of the word this morning? Genesis chapter number 3, verses number 8 through 10. Bible says here today, Genesis chapter 3, verses 8 through 10 this morning, said, And they heard the voice of Jehovah God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of Jehovah God among the trees of the garden. And Jehovah God called unto man and said, Where art thou? Thou. Let's say that together. Where art thou? Amen. Move on to the next one, James. And he said, I heard thy voices in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Father God, we love you this morning, Lord. We ask God that you would just anoint. Lord, we ask that you'll minister today, God, that you'll just use us. And Father, just move in our altars here in a few minutes. And Lord, we give you the praise in Jesus' name. And everybody says, amen. Turn your neighbor and say, good morning, neighbor. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you this morning. You may be seated today. You say, why do you do that this morning? Because I want people to know that they're welcome at our church. We love to have people. Amen. Because without people, there is no church. And so you've got to have people. And this morning, we're going to start a new uh, kind of uh, a series for this uh, next few weeks. And uh, we have different things that we're going to be preaching on. And uh, so uh, hopefully you'll get something out of it. And this morning, what we're going to be preaching on this morning, or the series this morning, is going to be entitled, Improving Your or Our Relationship with God. Improving your relationship or ours, we should say ours, everybody's uh, here this morning realizes that they need a closer walk with the Lord. Re- improving our relationships this morning. But the first sermon we'll preach on, Lord willing, today is when God goes searching. When God goes searching this morning. How many uh, this morning uh, have ever had to go searching uh, for a lost child or for a kid or or for a loved one? And uh, uh, maybe it's kind of like you men. If you men, you know what it's like. You take your wife to Walmart. You take her to uh, uh, the mall or or somewhere like that. And uh, uh, you turn around and, and all of a sudden they're gone. Am I the only one that ever have that trouble? They're gone. And uh, you walk at store three times, you walk at mall four times, and you still can't find them. And eventually, you, you say, you, write, you send out a text or you call them or whatever. And years ago, you know, when it got like that, my mom, when, when, when she would lose us kids, all of a sudden over the loudspeaker at Walmart or the grocery store, Toby, would you please come down to lane number one? Your mother is waiting for you. How many's ever had that experience? Hallelujah. Very embarrassing. Amen. And everybody you knew, all your friends was in that store and back then. But, uh, uh, you know, we look at those things and uh, uh, we think about searching. And, but I want to ask you a question this morning. In your relationship with God, where are you at in that relationship? Where have you come from the time you got saved, or if you're not saved, you don't, you don't have a relationship with God. But from the time that you got saved until now, is it still at the beginnings of that relationship? 
where it's kind of a dating situation on and off? Or this morning, have you fallen totally in love with God and you are saturated with him this morning? And so I want to ask you this morning, when God asked Adam and Eve in the scriptures, uh, he was at not only trying, he knew where they were in the garden, uh, but he wanted them uh, to answer because God's all-knowing. And so he already knew where they were, uh, but he wanted them to answer him uh, when he said, where art thou? Where are you in this garden? I'm searching for you this morning. Uh, and in your Christian life this morning, uh, in your relationship, Relationship with God is it one that is on on a, a best friend term? Is God your BF this morning, your best friend? Or this morning, is it one that it is off and on? Off and on, you know, some days you're closer than the other. Or is it one that is out of just convenience? When it's convenient to you, you, uh, you know God. Or is it one this morning, you only spend time with God when you need him? Amen. When you need him. Have you ever noticed when your car breaks down, all of a sudden the mechanic becomes your best friend? You haven't talked to him in years, but all of a sudden you walk in there. If you need a loan from the bank, all of a sudden the banker becomes a real good friend because you needed him. But friend, this morning, you go to the doctor this morning, and all of a sudden that doctor, because you need help, he becomes a friend to you this morning. But our relationship with God should not be based upon our needs this morning. It should be based on the reality that we want to draw closer to God, and we want to have an intimate relationship with God 24 Four seven. How many would say amen? But so many times it's based upon those relationships. God's intention in creation was to have a relationship of love with humanity, with mankind. God did not want there to be intimacy between him and mankind. Him and his creation. And the only way that that was resolved was through the blood of Jesus Christ. Because of the acts that Adam and Eve did here in chapter 3 caused there to be a gap in the relationship between God and man. And it had to be reconciled back. And it only come through the blood of of Jesus Christ. And so this morning, for God to have that relationship of love with mankind, for there to be that love, there must be a freedom that comes in that love this morning. For you see, there to love this morning, you cannot make anybody love you this morning. You cannot. Spouses, start fighting among each other and one of the spouses decides that they no longer love you, love the other spouse. You can't make that spouse love you. You have to win it back. God did not want man to be made to love him. He gave us a free will. God desired for man to love him. Amen. God desires for man to have a relationship. Any of you ever met an old dog? And you may be a dog lover. And you thought, oh, I just love dogs. And you reached out your hand. And you were reaching out in love just to pat the dog, to pet the dog. And all of a sudden that dog goes. <laughs> Anybody ever had that happen to you before? More than once, that's right. Hallelujah. After church, I'm not, I'm not telling you this, but you need to ask David about his dog experience this week. Hallelujah. He's got it on video. Amen. Y'all need to ask him about that, about how that rock waller that was bigger than him 
Ask him about it. Amen. But don't tell him that pastor told him, told you all this morning. Hallelujah. But do make sure you get to him. But we find this morning that a lot of times God created humanity with that choice. With that free will. In Genesis, we find here in Genesis 3, it gives us the historical fall of man. The result of sin in Adam from paradise and being alienated from God. Not only did Adam experience such consequences, but all of his poverty, everything came because of that experience of rebelling against God. He, that is where the guilt came in. The shame came in. The fear came in. The uh, being alienated or the alienation from God this morning uh, all came in that uh, in fear and shame Adam and Eve uh, they went and hid themselves uh, from God because they did not want God to see them uh, the way they were this morning uh, they didn't want God uh, to find them uh, they hid themselves uh, behind the fig leaves uh, in the garden uh, they hid themselves uh, in some bushes in the garden uh, when they knew it was time for God to come down uh, in the cool of the evening. Uh, they went and hid themselves from his very face uh, because they did not want God to see where they were at. Uh, and the Bible this morning uh, is still finding uh, that God is still seeking us and saying, where are you at today? Where are you at? Let me ask you this. We just came through the first month of the year. Are you closer to God this year than you were last year? Valentine's is next week. Are you closer to God this year? Do you have a greater love affection for God this Valentine's than you did last year? And don't just say yes. Think about it. Think about where you're really at. Like I said, God knew, to, knew exactly where Adam and Eve was hiding. God had already seen it. He already knew exactly what they were doing. But he wanted them to respond to where they were at this morning. The first, do you realize that in the scriptures, the first question that God proposed to man was, where art thou? Where are you at this morning? This question was not an informational one. God being all night and everything of already knowing it all this morning. He needed to know whether or not they desired to have that intimate relationship again. And it was not just an inquiry, but it was honestly seeking man. Friend, this morning, I know there's times you walk in a place, somebody will say, how are you doing today? They're not really worried about how you're doing today. No more than you're worried about th how they're doing today. It's just being polite. How are you doing today? And you'll say, fine, thank you. How are you doing today? Or you have those jerks that they just walk up. They don't even respond to the question. But God here this morning, he wanted a response from Adam and Eve. He didn't want them just to walk off. The question was a reflection and a conviction. It was asked for the sake of Adam and Eve. It was to probe their conscience, to prick their hearts this morning in order for them to answer about their relationship with God. And when we get done preaching this morning, 
God's going to ask you the same thing in these altars. He's going to ask me the same thing in my heart this morning. Where are you at, Pastor? Where are you at this morning? Where are you? That probing question. It's the first question that God asks. But the first thing I want to ask you this morning, or the first thing I want to preach on this morning, is questions that God did not ask. There's some things that God did not ask. Have any of you ever been around somebody that is really nosy? They ask you everything. They ask you the your shoe size. They ask you what your favorite food is. They ask you what, what your favorite color is. They ask you your birthday. They ask you where you're coming, where you're going, what's going on. Some of them are, are so bold, they'll ask you are, you, are you broke or do you have money? Amen. They'll ask you just, you, you name it. And normally those people are what we call busybodies. Anybody know any busybodies? Don't raise your hand, amen. And don't look at your neighbor either, hallelujah. But they are. And they will ask you all these questions about things. But the question, or questions, should I say this morning, more than one, there are some questions that God did not ask Adam and Eve when he went looking for them in the garden and when he found them. He did not ask them like a Santa Claus question this morning. Have you been a good person, a good little boy and a good little girl this morning? He already knew what they had done. His spirit had already felt what they had rejected is love, and they had rejected uh, being obedient to them. He already knew about their sin when they ate of that forbidden fruit, fruit this morning, and he knew that it was not good today. So God didn't ask him about that this morning. Likewise, Jesus comes to us this morning. He doesn't ask us a question about how bad you are. Look at the woman at the well. What did Jesus ask her? He didn't ask her the names of all the men that she had been with. He didn't ask her uh, all the sins uh, that she had committed. Uh, but friend, what did he ask her? He said, would you give me a drink of water? Uh, and if you'll give me a drink, I will give you a, a, a drink of water that you will never thirst again this morning. Jesus already knew. Uh, he began to tell her uh, about her sins. Uh, he, man, uh, we find the woman that was ca caught in adultery. Uh, he didn't ask her. He didn't say who was the list of men that you had been with. Amen. What did Jesus say to her? Where are thy accusers? Neither do I condemn thee, but go and sin no more. So many times people think, well, God is going to ask me how bad a sin I have committed. He already knows how bad you've committed. He knows everything. If he knows the numbers on my ever-changing head of hair this morning, he knows this morning the little sins that you commit or the big sins. He doesn't have to be asked this morning. We find this morning that all of us have sinned. What did Paul wrote to the Romans? All of sin that comes short of the glory of God this morning. All of us have today. He does not ask this morning, the second question he does not ask. He does not ask this morning a childlike question. And I know we as parents, we have asked our children this question. He didn't ask you, why did you do that? Why did you do that? Am I the only parent here at time of frustration with my son? When he did something that was wrong, that I would look him in the eye and say, young man, tell me why you done that. Every one of us probably would. But God didn't ask it. He already knows why we did it. Because the devil is a liar and a deceiver. 
and we were deceived by the lies and the devil of the devil this morning. And so God doesn't do that this morning. The question why sometimes fascinates people. You listen to a interview on the radio or something, they'll ask them why they did this. You go to some therapist. Why are you having the problems that you're having today? And normally, you guys will set up, say it's us daddies. We created all your problems in your life. But really, it's just a sin problem. It's a sin situation. And you haven't learned to trust in God. How many should follow me what I'm trying to preach to you this morning? Freedom begins to acknowledge and repent, not go deeper into our thoughts, not go deeper into insight. All he wants us to do is to repent of our sin. God didn't ask us this morning. After you asked that child, why did you do that? And I don't know how your children responded, but I can tell you how mine responded. I don't know. I just did, Dad. You, know? you say, well, how do you know Micah responded that way? Because that's the way I responded to my mom and dad. Amen. And you did too. I don't know. Because if my sisters weren't around that I could blame it on them, there was nobody else to blame it on. God didn't ask you that. And neither does God ask, because you did that, now what do I do with you? Now what do I do with you this morning? Any of your parents ever asked you, how do you think that I ought to discipline you? you know, oh, man, my parents, they never asked. My dad would tell me more than one time, Toby, this ain't hurting me a bit. It may hurt you, but it ain't hurting me a bit. You know, my mama was the same way. They didn't need my advice on that. I don't know who talked to them or who gave them advice, but boy, they knew how to dish it out. Amen. I didn't need somebody like that. But God does not ask that. You say, well, why doesn't God ask, what should I do with you now? Because God was not caught off guard by Adam and Eve. He knew from before the foundations of the world that man was going to need a redeemer. That man was going to need to be reconciled back to him. And so God's son and him made a pact that Christ, he said, I will take them to be my inheritance. And I will go to the cross for the shedding of my blood. I will be that perfect lamb that would be slain this morning. God already had a plan, and it isn't a plan B, but it was a plan B, A, should I say. You say, was what is plan A? It comes from that old song at Calvary. Hallelujah. That is where it is all. Oh, we cleave to that old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown this morning. That was plan A for man when man found God. We cleave at Calvary. Finally, God did not explode and say, How dare you? He was not based. His reaction and his relationship with man on emotionalism. On emotionalism. How many times do we base our relationships on emotionalism? 
somebody says something we don't like. So we just, we grow up. Somebody does something. They ain't my friend anymore. I don't want nothing to do with them. How dare you? God didn't storm away and just separate himself. Yes, his holiness, it was offended by seeing him this morning. Yes, his heart was broken this morning. He meant by the rebellion. Yes, his fellowship was broken by their choice this morning. Yes, his love was constrained to him this morning for man to pursue. And man moved away from God. But God still pursued them when he said, Adam and Eve, where art thou this morning? How far into the pit of this world did we fall and God comes searching and he says where art thou this morning give the Lord a hand clap for God this morning offenders are pursued and loved by the one who offended by the one who made a mistake secondly this morning What does God's question tell us about us? Where art thou? Where art thou? His question this morning tells us Here a few weeks ago, our new neighbors next door, they got two little poodles. They're the cutest little things you ever seen. And one's pure white, and one is brown. And the one that is pure white, they don't have to keep him tied up or in a pen. But the one that is brown color, they have to keep him in a pen or tied up when they're gone because he'll just go everywhere. But the one that is a white, he just, wherever the brown one goes, is where he goes. If the brown one doesn't go out of the yard, he doesn't go out of the yard. So a few weeks ago, I pulled up the house, and they were gone. Their vehicles were gone, and I seen their dogs were loose. And that little black one was just running everywhere, all over the yard and, and over in our yard. And So I thought, I better tie that black one back up or put it back up. So I went over there and tried to call them to me. And you know how dogs are. They'll come from here to that altar. and They don't really know you very well. and They'll bark at you, bark at you, bark at you, especially the little ones. And when you want them to come to you, they won't come to you. So I got down on my hands and knees. I thought, well, I can catch these guys. All I got to do is catch the brown one. But he always stands at arm's length. No matter how fast or how hard I tried. He always stayed away. So after about 10 minutes of trying to catch the dogs, I thought, well, dogs, you live by the highway. I may catch you out there on the highway and bring you home in a box. I just left. I didn't know what else to do. Just couldn't catch them all. So I was out working in the yard and mowing. And them two dogs, they followed me in the lawnmower. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But they wouldn't let me catch them. I went out here and worked on the crazy sign, and they went out to the road, and I would shoo them back. 
They would never let me catch them, no matter what. But anything I did, they wouldn't allow me. So many people this morning, God is saying, where art thou searching when he gets close enough to help? He gets close enough that you can hear his voice. They back off. They move away. They put their life in a more dangerous situation. I ran them dogs from over here all the way back over there. Almost got hit out here. And I thought before long, I thought either the dogs are going to die or I'm going to get killed chasing them dogs. They're not my dogs, amen. I'm just going to have to tell the poor little two little girls over there, I'm sorry. But God this morning, question tells us about him. He isn't like I was with those dogs. Frustrated and give up. Say, let the chips fall where they lie. But God is that friend. He's that individual that will stick with us this morning. He is for us. Despite of all of our sins, despite of all of our withdrawals, despite, uh, amen, of all of our uh, insignificance this morning uh, in ourselves, despite of everything that we are this morning, uh, God still wants to be a part of your life today. And when he come to Adam and Eve, what he was simply revealing to them was Adam and Eve, I'm looking for you because I want to be a part of my life this morning, of your life. He, he has, a, has revealed his basis of his friendship and trust, and he simply went looking for them that they would trust him. And in your lives this morning, as we are building our closer and improving our relationship with God, one thing you got to learn is to trust Him. Understand that He is already in control of the situation that you're on, that you're in. If you'll follow His steps, He's working in a way that you may not know of this morning. You've got to say, Lord, I will trust you. Those dogs would never trust me. We've had our, those new neighbors since October. To this day, they're in our yard. They come around. But Sheila and I, neither one have petted those dogs. They don't trust me. Oh, they come and they bark at the fence and everything else. <laughs> but they don't trust me. They know that we're not going to hurt them, but they still don't trust me. You say, but them are just old dogs. But how many of us just old, old humanity, we do God that way? We bark at him. We let him chase us. But we never submit to him. Totally. Oh, we'll submit this part of our lives. We'll submit that part of our lives. But as long as there's not a whole lot required, we'll be all right. But when he starts asking us to give more and more and more and begin to follow him, you see, some people say, well, one thing that we've got to realize is that God already knows the worst about us. What did Paul say when he was preaching in his writings in his epistle? He said, I was the chiefest a sinner. He, he was saying, I was the worst of the worst of the worst. There was nobody that was lower than high. I was a persecutor of the saints. I was there the day and overseen the day that they stoned Stephen. I was there at other times when other saints were martyred and was with eyes of okay. I was the worst of the worst, he man. But free him this morning. God still loved them. God still reached 
reached out for Paul uh, on the road to Damascus uh, and said, why are you kicking against the pricks of me this morning? Uh, why are you working against me? Uh, I am for you. I love you. I want to save you. I want to change you. Uh, and each one of our lives this morning, uh, God wants that relationship of change in our lives to come. And we got to say, God, here I am. Here I am, God. God has a nature that some of us humans don't have. He has a forgiving nature. He'll forgive us. All we have to do is ask. He'll do so. No matter what we do, God wants our relationship with Him to not just be restored, but to be continual, continual, continual. And he has no reluctance to forgive. Sometimes in our human relationships, we forgive, but we have a reluctance to continue on in that relationship. And most of the time, the reason why we have that reluctance is because we truly haven't forgiven it here. We forgave here, we forgave here, but we haven't forgiven here. I forgive you, but I'll never forget you. I have a, thank God I'm getting old now. I have a mind. I have a mind this morning that is a photogenic mind. From just about from the time I was seven years old, age 55, I can remember in a special kind of way every conversation in college I never had to take one note because that teacher said it I could remember it now if she expected me to read it that's a whole different thing I mean totally different if they worked it out on the chalkboard, you know how they used to do, or the felt boards and all of that, I knew it. I knew it. I didn't have to study it. I knew it. I can remember every disagreement Sheila and I have had over 34 and a half years of marriage. Yes, sir. I can remember every good conversation that we've had. By the way, give Brian and Sherry a clap this morning. They've been married 35 years today. Hallelujah. Amen. I can remember every meeting that I've ever been in. As far as biblical things for church, board meetings, all the way back from when I started when I was 22 years old. The first church I pastored at 22. I can remember every one of those conversations that we had. And boy, at 22, some of them was a pleasant. Hallelujah. I made a bunch of mistakes in that old board because they knew how to chew on me. And you know, I'll be driving down the road, just not even thinking about anything, just listening to music or whatever. And that board meeting that I had when I was 22 years old, and boy, that board member was burning my hide. All of a sudden, it'll just pop up. Boom. Am I the only one like this? It'll just pop up. And I'll, I'll start feeling that old fear. I'll start thinking about, you know, something that my wife's sweet mother said to me when we first got married. And I'll just start to think, oh, you're Jesus. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. But I can remember all those things. I remember what all you've said to me too. Thank God, 99.9 of them have been good. But I do remember that 0.1. And it can become a nightmare. I told Sheila the other day, I said, I'm thankful 
that I'm getting older and my mind is starting to forget some of that stuff. Hallelujah. You don't know what's all up here, folks, and you don't want to know. Hallelujah. But God, this morning, he doesn't hold any of that against us. The questions this tells us this morning that God was not interested in their past. But God was interested in what they were doing right there, right now, in that time. And in our services this morning, uh, in getting acquainted with God, quit worrying about what happened yesterday. Renew your love relationship with God this morning uh, because the mercies of God is renewed on your behalf every morning. Find that relationship with God. How do we respond? Closing with this this morning. Thank you, Pastor. How do we respond? The third thing this morning to those questions, to God's questions. Where are you? Where are you? It's a hard one for us this morning. When I think about all those things, I've told you I've preached in over 400 different churches in the last three months. You know, when I walk in those buildings, I don't have to look at my notes. I know exactly what I'm preaching on. 400 different times. And I didn't count the times that I went back Sundays with 400 new people. I pray that mind lives in us. But when we look here this morning, how do we respond to that question? God is calling us out of our You ought to see some of you this morning if we hope if we have testimony service and you're and I turn it over to somebody and they start calling y'all out. Hey, you testify. Man, you're all trying to get behind that pew. They know where you're at. They know where you're at. And we try to hide. He's asking us this morning to take a hard look. At ourselves. It's easy for us to look at somebody else. It's easy for us to blame our past because of our past people that we were associated with. But God was not asking Adam and Eve about their past or anything like that. He wanted to know where they were at at the present time. He's calling us to an end of an eternal game of hide and seek this morning. And he's calling us to come out and trust him. Oh, we sing that old song, open my heart, Lord Jesus. Open my heart. Adam's response was interesting. came out of the bushes and he told God he was ashamed of what he'd done. But then immediately he tries to hide behind self-defense. And he begins to shift the blame. God didn't ask them who to blame. He asked them in their own life, in their own development, in their own concern, where aren't thou? 
we may come out where we're at. That immediately when we feel exposed, we'll go back into hiding. He began to point at Eve. It was the woman you gave me, God. She's the real corporate. She's the one who corrupt me. Does that not sound like so much of the time of our lives? God, it's not my fault. It's this one. It's how I was raised. Amen. This and that. How many of you ever heard? Uh, oh, this morning. Uh, well, they're, they are just, uh, they're the apple not far from the tree. Uh, they're just like their father. They're just like their mother. Uh, they're just like that one. Uh, no, they made a choice. They made a choice. And they decided to be that way. They decided that they were going to be that way. I came to that crossroad myself. I made a choice that I could either go this way or I could go that way. I could be like my mother's family or I could be like my dad's family. My mother's family are nothing but heathens. When I say heathens, you all don't even know the beginning of it. Heathens upon heathens. The depth of gross sin that you can imagine. But around 14 years old, my first time, I got in trouble. And got in trouble with the law. And had to take a ride in that police car at 14 years old. I decided right then, I didn't want to be like my mama's daddy. Or her brothers. Or her sister's. I didn't want to be in that way or, or all of my cousins just about on that side of the family, but a few. But I wanted to be like my dad's family. Why? Because they were Pentecostal. They were in church. They were outstanding citizens. They had wholesome families. Do you know on my dad's side of the family, Starting with his dad and my dad and all of his children. That it's been over a hundred years since a divorce has been in our family. A hundred years. All because his mom and dad decided one day, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Hallelujah. And now there's... We're starting in my dad's family. The third generation and fourth generation... You say, but pastor, I don't, I'm not talking about anybody's had a divorce. We don't, every situation is different. Don't get me wrong. But I made a decision in my life. You say, well, you've been in the ministry. Yeah, I know. And there's been many times that we could have walked away. Walked away from our marriage. Walked away from our family. Hey. I'm a northern, she's a southern, and she's a redhead, and I'm a hard-headed hard, hard -headed northern. Oh, you put those two together, let me tell you something. There's some spaghetti going on sometimes. But thank God she's finally come over to my kind of sauce. Amen. Now, we met somewhere in the middle, and that's where Micah comes. Bless that poor boy's heart. He's got southern blood and northern blood in him. He doesn't know when he's coming or going. Hallelujah. Bless his heart. He made a decision. And that is what God is saying here. And I don't never look down because I wasn't in your marriage situation. Some of you were in a toxic situation, was, was not healthy for your life or for your life's or for your family, and you had to break away, and I totally understand that. Amen. We all do. So don't think that Pastor Toby is saying, well, he come from, no, no. I'm just saying that there was principles that was put in. And so far, they've held up through the years. But a number of us family has married into those type of toxic situations. 
You say, will it happen? It probably will somewhere down the road. But we still thank for that foundation that was laid. And this morning, when I look at this, we open our heart. And we many times, we begin to want to share or, or blame or shift the blame. Often when God asks us a question, how we respond, we say, well, everybody else is going, is doing this. You say, well, we are adults. We are adults. We don't, we don't respond that way. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Amen. Yes, I do this morning. We all, sometimes we cave to peer pressure. Every one of us we do. Hallelujah. How many of y'all put on deodorant this morning? Why did you do that? Because you didn't want that neighbor beside you. Just... Yeah. Hallelujah. You know, I don't know how you all are, but I don't notice when I stink. that individual beside you still does. So if I don't shake your hand, no, no. But we feel the pressure. That's just a funny illustration. But we feel the pressure and we say, well, they're all doing it. If they all want to go to hell in a handbasket, doesn't mean that I want to go with them. I don't want to go down that stream. I want to walk on the streets of gold. Hallelujah. See the walls of jasper. And see the gates of pearl. And see the one who asked, where art thou? And I said, here I am, Lord. That's where I want to go. And Sheila comes this morning. Don't. Don't look at it and say, well, everybody else. Or sometimes we will say, I'm not so bad. I'm, I'm better than most people. And that is probably true. We may be in a lot of ways. But also the Bible tells us that man's inside is rotten. You know, you may have just been a good old boy or a good old girl. But you needed the same blood of Jesus Christ shed for the murderer, for the rapist, for the abuser, for the liar, for the cheater. You need that same blood to be applied to your heart that you need Jesus. Because without that blood, we'd all be the same way, headed in the same direction. See, we don't gain heaven by our merits. We don't have a closer relationship with God by our merits this morning. all have come short of the glory of God but it's through his righteousness through his righteousness years ago Muhammad Ali was just coming into this vein he had just won a few fights champion of the world and the arrogancy and everything that he felt about himself he thought he was greater than life itself and greater than any other human he got onto a plane after he was young and very arrogant after winning a fight got the purse of a million dollars or whatever it was feeling pretty good and the pilot says over the intercom if you've ever flown you've heard it please buckle up we're about to take off buckle your seat belts get all your possessions and hold up we're about to take off Ali was sitting there with his groupies all around him and laughing and joking and doing all he always done and not paying anybody any attention. Finally, that little 
flight attendant got up the boldness to come to him and said, Mr. Ali, you need to buckle up. We're fixing to take off. Ali looked at her and said, Little Missy, I want to tell you something. Superman doesn't have have to have a buckle on. That little stewardess, that little flight attendant looked at him. She got a little bolder and said, you're right. But Superman doesn't have to fly in a plane either. So many times we think we're above everything else. Friend, we're all made of the same dirt. We all came from that same clay that God threw out and he made man and he blew life into us. We've got to realize this morning that there's not one bigger or one greater. There's not one that have super status over another this morning. We all have fall short of the glory of God. But God has desired that every man, every boy, every girl, every race, every creed, every color, that they would come to know him and he desires a relationship with every one of them and this morning that same God is here in this church on February the 6th and he said I want you to open my heart open your heart I'm crying out to you this morning saying where aren't you because I want a relationship with you I want to find that place we can hide behind different shapes and different forms, behind different businesses. But friend, this morning, the greatest place that we can come is to come out and say, God, here I am. Mold me and make me. Shape me, Lord. Refine me, oh God that I may be more like you and I come to you in a greater way. Can we stand this morning? Hallelujah. 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 The right response is to step out amid your hiding and come face to face with God who's seeking you stand right before him in front of him, in front of your bush and be made whole have that walk with the Father through these next four Sundays Lord willing I'm going to be preaching on that walk that development of our relationship to take you out, take me out. Lord God wants to take this church out. Because he desires a intimate relationship with every one of us. Father Lord, we preached your word this morning. God, we give it everything that we have today. We emptied out our vessel. Lord, I ask you this morning to take this word. Let us take an inward look on a personal relationship with you. Find out where we exactly are in our lives. Some here this morning, God, they're young. And they may think that they have much to live. Others here this morning are up in their golden years. And they think, well, I don't have a lot left. But whether they're young, whether they're old, or whether they're in the middle, who aren't saved. And let us ask ourselves through your eyes, where are we with you this morning? Father, we give you praise. In the name of Jesus. Can we just lift those hands before we give the altar call this morning? Oh, I love you.
one of you here this morning would say, Pastor, I see some room. I see some areas and I need to get my, out behind the bush and just open up to God in my life this morning. How many would say that this morning? Hallelujah. I want us to come and let's stand across the front of this auditorium and just yield ourselves over to God. Say, God, throw those hands up like we asked you last Sunday morning. Throw those hands up and say, God, here I am. I want to just surrender and expose myself to you. And you begin to reconcile our relationships. If you're not saved this morning, come on with us this morning. Can we step out of those views? And I believe if everyone in this room will be honest with yourself, you'll see a need of a massive improvement. And if you're saying, well, not me, well, then you've got too much pride. And you need to crucify that pride. Because every one of us are only what we are through His grace this morning, through His mercy. Just begin to open up your relationship with God. Open up your heart. God, this morning, the word has pricked me. The word has spoken to me, God. Lord, I want to be closer to you. Lord, I want to be so close that I can hear, hear you as that still, small voice. It doesn't have to be the rippling of the thunder, but that still, small voice, God. God, I want to know your heart. I want to know when your spirit is picking my heart, God. God, convict me of my sins that have easily beset me. And those things, God, that I'm saying, well, everybody else is. I want to have the eyes of righteousness and the eyes of holiness upon me, God. I don't want to pattern my life after what everybody else is. God, I want to pattern my life after I want you to be. I want you to God. And this morning, Lord, I felt that call. She called out and said, where art thou? Where art thou? Where art thou? Where art thou? thou? Lord, I'm coming this morning and opening my heart and saying, God, here I am.